spit out. It's up, man. It's your boy Vontae, man. Today we got a crazy and psycho moment from my shit hundred pound life season nine. Me personally, I don't wanna let none of my pop get this big. <laughs> Come on, bro, you gotta be a bit more fucking beat. No, bro, you, you ain't no goddamn sitting on the floor. You ain't no on the light. You probably like, but ho, oh. ho got a phone. <laughs> <laughs> So to stop eating. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will fall on your face when you're sleeping. My 600 pound life is a show about testing absolute limits. Patients who are suffering from. Overweight and obesity, and who come on the show to change and save their lives. Doctor Now helps patients. All of those patients who suffer are being bedridden in physical and mental pain. He helps them by starting on an aggressive diet and workout plan to qualify for weight loss surgery. But in today's video, we'll see some crazy and psycho moments from my 600 pound life season nine. Cindy's psycho moment. When Cindy featured on the show, she was bed bound, unable to In fact, it wasn't easy for her to even get to her bathroom, as it makes her quite exhausted. She also has a carer who looks after her, but her friends convinced her after some struggles to contact Dr. Now. At first, everything looked all well and quite set up for her to get medical transport to visit Dr. Now. But when the actual time came in, and when medical transport arrived at her place, Cindy started driving crazy both the medical staff team and her friend Sandy. Because randomly, she constantly changed her mind in a second. She started making scenarios in her mind whether or not she wants to go. While the other way, she made a medical team to stand waiting as she pretended to take a shower and continued her indecisiveness for decades. Sandy, her friend, broke down into tears as she didn't want to lose her best friend. After seeing all this, only then, Cindy agreed to go. Well, this isn't just a crazy and psycho moment. In fact, it was also painstakingly infuriating. Carrie's earring habits at work. Food is my highest priority, is a one quote that directly sums up Carrie's life. At a doctor's office, Carrie works as a receptionist because it's the only job she can feasibly do, as she just needs to be sitting down all the time, and because her weight can help her to walk quite more and makes it difficult to be comfortable standing on her feet. Well, for her eight hour duty, whenever she walks into her workplace, all she can think about is food. Bye. It is so hard for me to stop eating. She also claims that lunch is the only thing that motivates her to do her best. In fact, as soon as she gets into her job, she eventually starts craving food and ends up eating her lunch just a few minutes after sitting down. As you can see in the clip, she's huddling over to the microwave and reaching for the fridge. Even notice how Carrie is winded, especially just after a few words of conversation. Coming in today, answer messages. 
the new best way to make money on land that nobody's talking about is something you've never heard of before. It's... She can hardly breathe after uttering some words while talking to someone. Sadly, her lifestyle is merely crazy. Dedrick's trip to Houston. Mo Sadly, her lifestyle is merely crazy. Dedrick's trip to Houston moment. With two orders of wings and the order of cheese bread, ice cream is one of my favorites. In this clip, you'll see that when Dedrick went on the show, he was at his breaking point as he could barely walk. Even he had lots of trouble while doing his daily do simple tasks such as going to the restroom or cooking a meal for himself. Thedrick had to travel to Texas from Florida to seek help by Dr. Now. Well, his mother had to help him in their minivan. So hold on, hold on. He had to drive from Florida to Texas in the back of a minivan. He's short too, though, man. You can't fit through the side of a minivan, though. You big enough. You can't fit through that. Oh, shit. Crazy. I had to take out a seat for that. That shit is wild. With all the seating down in the trunk when he decided to meet Dr. Now to be starting his journey. In fact, during his whole trip, he was not even able to use the bathroom because of his heavy body. On the other hand, he was not able to get out of the vehicle on his own. For that trip, they had to drive 700 miles. But while on their way, there were so many stopping points in which fast food restaurants were also included. With him, his mother was also there, and she wanted to be a part of his weight loss journey. But during their way to Dr. Now's place, she kept stopping at fast food places to get their meals. What a support! I just stuck to salads, vegetable, and meat. Well, that's good. Dr. Now would for sure not be happy after knowing all that he was making stops in unhealthy fast food places. According to Thedrick and his mom, they already knew that these were not the best choices, but they were hoping that reaching at Dr. Now's office would help them out. But he definitely made some psycho and crazy unhealthy choices on the trip down. Carrie's husband. Just by the looks of her, as a viewer, we all knew already she was on the brink of eating herself to death. While the craziest aspect of Carrie's story is that she can pinpoint her exact behaviors and actually she's understandably self-aware about where she needs help as she knows that her weight is out of control. In fact, her body is getting to a breaking point, but despite the fact that she knows all that, she still can't seem to get her eating habits under control. Well, in her episode, she gripes about her struggles and efforts to get rid of her overeating as her husband is the one who feeds her a large amount of food for dinner. Even on the camera, she was seen crying and telling the crew that it's quite hard for her to focus on work, her family, and her husband. Because our relationship is so strained, I miss my husband terribly bad. All because of her overeating, and she eats too much, and her life... So like, he and I, I know they look older, right? Yeah. Like, but if I could get a pussy, but I'm not gonna be with you, like, like, I'm not feeding you, bitch. Like, so. If is drastically affected by all this. Well, she complains about her weight and her life, but still she asks her husband to fill her plate by putting all that that looks like a pound or two of pasta and the kicker, and to complete the multi-thousand calorie meal, he piles four garlic breadsticks on top. This is all sick, psycho, and crazy. How much Carrie consumes her food, and she's aware that she has no control over all that stuff. Melissa M's craziest story. Yeah. 
Yeah, Some people eat problems at work, bro. Yeah, you can, ain't no fucking way you can see you. Ain't no fucking Hit way. Hit my, he knock down over every kick. That's so possible. The origin of Melissa's story was one of the craziest and saddest moments of the episode of season 9. Actually, when she was a child, like other girls, she also had a beautiful and strong bond with her father. She even looked up to him all the time. But however, her parents' relationship was quite shattered, as it was on the rocks when she turned 8. There. For after some time, her father left them, so she began to gain weight and she started to binge eating to cope up with her stress. I have a hard time facing the reality of my life because at my size, at my weight. In fact, at the age of 13, when she weighed 250 pounds, her mother started verbally abusing her for being overweight and telling her that she was ugly and she was fat. Could beat you all! But look, 250 pounds. It's a grown ass man, he about 250, 260. You 250? Yeah, like 240. Like 240. But you ain't really fat though, you, you, you a. I got a little fat, like, like, like you a. He got a big ass shirt. Yeah, nigga, like a sport type thing. Like. No, he got a big ass shirt. Yeah, alright, 240, 248, 240. Like 250. But Reed, this grown ass man. Shot at 13, 250. She probably been motherfucking linebacker. She's short. She's short. She look like she got five two though. Your body don't supposed to be that. Don't be in my fucked up. Like, bro, that ain't even no, like, all shit in the world. I don't care what I'm going through. I'm not finna say shit that eat all day. She said she have a problem with it. The reason she eats so much is because she got a problem with it. Deal with her life. What the fuck? You need to dust the down reason you like it. How the hell you sound? You eat like that shit. Crazy. Bro, people eat that shit. No, 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 no. That shit, no. shit. about people that make excuses like smoking, bro. They smoke because they screw. They say it. That shit hurt. It hurt. But really, they just trying to use, they just trying to look for people, bro. She did fat, bro. They feel just saying she love me. Nah, she said I'm gonna fuck with her, but that shit fuck. All the people out there. She was hurt. She just talking to her. That she big as a house. That shit fuck with her mind, bro. No, she had to do shit with her big ass now. Shit like that ain't gonna be good. Yeah. Because of all that, she lost her weight, but another trauma hit her when she was just 15. She got pregnant, and her boyfriend left her, so she had to have an abortion. Because of this major and tragic incident, she fell into depression at the age of 18, which led her to almost 400 pounds. She also dropped out of school and got re-enrolled because she always wanted to study like other students. But in Bro, she might, she might be four years old. So the question, I'll tell you, she been through some shit though, bro. Like, oh, yeah. Bro, bro, bro. Okay, dude. The man literally said she, she was two fit and 14. At 16, she lost all the way and had a baby. You gained 400 pounds. She had a, her baby daddy left. Well, yeah, yeah, then you had a But still, you lost all the way though. You gained 400 pounds in two years. She was fought up in the head. In two years, you gained 400 pounds, bro. Ain't no way you didn't have in her life, there came a point when she ended up dropping out of college and she had to get a job. 
But at the age of 27, to deal with the life out of it, all she did was eat and work. Well, as we know, our entire world. around, she admitted that food was the major thing that filled the void that she needed. At 35, she was getting sick all the time and lost her mother. But because of her weight, Melissa had to miss her mother's funeral. And at that time, her only support system was her friend Shay. That heartbreak... See, like, think about shit like that. If you so big, you can't go to your mom's funeral, that shit should motivate you like this shit sad, man. They offer no free surgery, though, for Jennifer Corder and shit. So they really ain't like that for probably the last time to make it to who's for the race. I ain't gonna die, nobody playing on two sisters. Mm -hmm. They say, like, I ain't fat, bitch, you're the fat one, you fat bitch. She stole my time, I'm talking about shit. Nothing doesn't knock off of that, bitch. Nah, but he tried to push ass on that motherfucker. Yeah, bro. Breaking moment was the craziest and saddest story moment, which only made Melissa's journey that much more important. What the fat leave your stuff, bitch? Carrie's transformation. Well, if you haven't watched Carrie's episode yet, then there's a spoiler alert, as this entry is actually a number one craziest moment of her episode of season 9 that actually happened once it ends. Spoiler is all about Carrie's transformation, which can make you surprised and actually a jaw-dropping moment. I'm proud to say that she finally accomplished her goal by struggling against all odds. Well, who doesn't love a good happy ending? We all do, right? At the end of her episode, you'll see Carrie's self-awareness as it came full circle and she was able to successfully lose her unwanted weight just to be qualified to get bariatric surgery under the supervision of Dr. Now. You may remember as earlier they mentioned in her episode when she griped over her relationship with her husband. Also, she confessed that she was worried that he might get fed up of her and leave her being obese just like other certainly strains relationships. But that's quite healthy and optimistic of her that she worked on herself and made things possible. Well, despite the ups and downs of her dramatic weight loss, her relationship with her husband is still going strong. In fact, I've followed up with Carrie on all her social media platforms, and on her social pages, it seems that in order to keep her husband, she's been able to keep off the weight that she lost over her tragic journey. I'm quite happy to add, Carrie in today list of 600 pound patients who, despite the craziness of being obese, was able to turn her life around. Well, as a viewer, I can only hope and wish that other psychic patients should learn from her example that they can change their lifestyle and have the courage to prove to themselves, their loved ones, and everyone that they are capable of true change. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you guys found it interesting, I'd much appreciate it if you commented down below about the video and leave a thumbs up. Make sure you let her get that shit, man. That shit's gonna feed me all